Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, this is Mikey Trayvon's RV Center here to congratulate you on your purchase of your Pilgrim 25 PRK travel trailer. I'm here to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things, get the best out of your camping experience. Let's talk about arriving at the campsite. A couple things to take into consideration. Of course, your big awning. And then next, of course, your slide. You have plenty of room for that slide. It's little. Still leave plenty of room for that to come in and out unhindered. Preferably nothing hanging over top of it. And I want you to think about where your power and water connections are gonna be. They are actually right next to each other back here at the rear of your off camp side or your driver's side of your tow vehicle. Your power and your water connection. So park accordingly so that you can utilize facilities at the campsite. Once you arrive and unhook your hitch, first thing you need to do is level your unit. If you have a docking light, should you arrive at night, simply raise or lower your unit. Now I do recommend getting a stick on level, put it over on your off camp side right in the middle of the unit. Somebody can stand over there and watch it for you and let you know when your unit's level. Now should you lose power, this little rubber stopper comes up and you do have this little manual hand crank that you can raise and lower this if you don't have power. Once you've got our unit level, next thing we do is stabilize it. And on four corners, you have stabilizing jacks and this three quarter inch crank to run these down with. Now, what I do recommend, you see these are come down rather quick, scissor jacks. What I do recommend our jack pads. Jack pads are going to protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt and debris and hot black top. Uh, keep them from sinking, better distribute the weight. Use your 10% off coupon and grab you a four pack of those. They're worth the money. Put them on the ground and just run these down until they're taut. Remember, these are stabilizing jacks, not leveling jacks. So we just want to run them down until they're nice and tight. If you get any resistance from this, once you hit the bottom, then you know you're down far enough. Got our unit level, stable. Let's go ahead and hook up our power and water. Now all we're here at the rear of your unit is your 30 amp service. It conveniently stores right inside here. Just pull all that out, run that cord out, should you need it. There is a 30 to 110 adapter that you can plug in at home. Got our power hooked up, let's hook our water up. Water connection is right here. First and foremost, your water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is going to reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI. It's going to protect the lines in your unit. You don't know what the water pressure is at different campsites. So hook that up. Hook your hose up. Don't turn our hose on yet. We're gonna come right here to the left to your hot water heater. All we're gonna do at this point is return our drain plug. You may have left it out from the last time you were camping. Go ahead and get that back up in there nice and snug. Once that's in there, then you can go ahead and turn on your water. Go inside to your hot water tap. Open up your hot water tap. Water will not come out hot, but once water is coming out of there, then you know your hot water heater is full and you can let, turn it on from indoors. Let's say we're gonna go camping and we're not gonna use city water. We're gonna use potable water. Over on your campsite, here's your potable water tank. You can just simply fill this with a hose. Uh, two ways to tell when it's full. One, there is an overflow valve right here. And two, there's, when you check the levels of your tanks inside, you hold your fresh tank button down. That'll tell you when this is full.
Just remember, when using potable water is when you're going to want to turn on your water pump. Don't turn on your water pump when using city water. It's already pressurized and unnecessary. All right, we got our unit all hooked up to camp. Let me walk you around the rest of the outside of the unit and show you a few other things. Do you have your outdoor speakers? Big, beautiful awning. Bring that out by hand. This is your furnace heat release. Steer clear of this. It'll get rather warm if you have your furnace running. You have a scare light, they call that. 110 back here by your separate entry doorway to the bedroom. Your big pass through storage. Spare tire up front here. Propane tanks. You do have a regulator on it. Simply point it toward the tank you wish to be using. Lefty Lucy to open. Previous owner had uh, their own valves on here to tell when everything's low or high. There's a cover for your propane tanks. Your battery post. Check your battery post now and then. And make sure the terminals haven't wiggled loose as you bounce this down the road. They have stuck a side to side level on the front of this unit already. But again, I recommend one for this side so you can tell. Oh, there it is. They've already put one on there for you. Right at the front of the unit. Coming around to this side, you got two different places to dump. One there for your black and gray. Then you have an extra gray tank back here for your kitchen area. Again, hot water heater. That's where you plug your cable in at the campsite. Power, outdoor shower, city water connect, and storage. There's a ladder for a reason. Go up and check your seams. Caulk your roof as needed, uh, preferably a couple times a year. Just keep an eye on it. That's a hood for your microwave, and that is an access panel to the back of your fridge. That about covers everything out here. Let's go take a look on the inside. Coming up inside your door, the first thing I always like to point out, make sure that you and everyone that's camping with you knows that the fire extinguisher is located at the entry doorway in case of an emergency. To the left as you walk in the doorway is a bunch of lighting. We'll start right here on the left with your domestic fridge. Press that button in. We're on auto. Auto means that when you're plugged in, you're running off electricity. As soon as you unplug, you're on gas. Lift this button up to go strictly gas. Self-explanatory microwave. You have a light and a fan above your stove. Top here folds down, makes a good backsplash. Simply turn this to light, hit your spark, and there's your flame. Over here, you push and hold for your pilot light, for your oven. Make sure you lift up on that when you pull this forward. Down below your stove is your 12 volt carbon monoxide detector. The reason I mention this 12 volt, it's always running off your battery. So, if you're going to be gone for the day not using your battery, go ahead and use your battery. Uh, disconnect one of your battery posts to keep this from running your battery down. 110, a lot of individual lighting throughout here. Over here, where you run your slide in and out. Here's where you turn on your water heater if, you, if you're hooked up to gas. Over here, if you're hooked up to electric. Here's an access panel to your fuses and breaker box. Got a little variety in there. I see a 1, 10, 15, and 40. Grab a handful of those with you when you go camping. Over here to the right is your television. Looks like you've already got a DVD player in here. Sound system. Oh yeah. Your table. Of course, just lift straight up and these legs will come out. Set the table down on these boards all the way around. Remove your back cushions on top. Make a bed over here. Jackknife down to make a bed. Put in the back, lift up from the front and grab it from the back. Coming into the hallway here. Antenna. Couple smoke alarms, one here and here. Oh, this is actually a carbon monoxide alarm, excuse me. Coming down here on the wall. 
Water pump should be off. Here's where you check your tanks. So your brand new battery, your fresh tank. This is the button I said you can hold in to tell when your potable water is full. Your black, gray, and galley tanks. Your thermostat down here. Oh, let's start. Well, it already started. Start with your furnace. Turn your furnace on. Turn the heat up. That's running. Shut that off. There's your AC. Shut that off. Now, the AC will shut off quickly, but whenever you shut off your furnace, give it a few minutes. It takes a moment to shut off. It's like that on all units. Come back into your bathroom here. I just want to mention in here, this is where your 110 with GFCI resets at. You do have a hand crank open. Exhaust vent in here. Bedroom, same thing. Hand crank open, no, no exhaust vent. Not much more to talk about back in the bedroom other than you have your big storage area. When you do leave, you do have this big accordion doorway that goes across top. Make sure you snap this closed when leaving the campsite. We can leave in the campsite, let's act, act like we are and close everything up. So the first thing I like to do is shut off all my lighting at the main door. Because then I can see all the lights I need to go through and shut off. Let me do that real quick. So now that I've shut off all the lighting except for what I can control here at the control panel. Let's go ahead and bring our slide in. Make sure this is back to return position and nothing is in the way of the slide coming in. Make sure that bathroom door is closed. The doors are closed on your cabinetry here. And then just run this in real quick. That's it, come over here. Shut off our main lights. Coming out of the unit. Lock and deadbolt your door when you leave. Lift and turn this handle. Come around to your hot water heater. We're gonna unhook our cable, unhook our water. Bring up our stabilizing jacks. Come back here to your hot water heater and lift up on this pressure release valve and leave that open. That's gonna release all the water out of your lines. Once it's done, remember to snap this back down or your door will not close. And then you can pull this drain plug. That'll get the rest of it out of there. And remember to close up your hot water heater. Over on the other side there, you can see, is your low point drain. Open that up, drain your waters out, and head on up to the dump station. At the dump station, we start in the front. First thing you're gonna do is pull your left handle. It's gonna be your black tank. After that, pull your right handle. It's gonna be clean the waters, your sinks, your showers, or clean your sewage hose out for you. Close that up. Come back here, hook up your hose again, and then pull this gray handle. That's gonna be all galley water from your sink up front. It's gonna again clean your sewage hose out. Close your sewage hose up, store it in a sanitary place, and head on home. Again, we thank you guys so much for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this trailer for many years to come. Happy camping.